Marcus, great opportunity to catch up with you now based in Hong Kong. Well, the world's on fire, it would seem. It would seem so, Greg. Life goes on here in Hong Kong. G'day to you and everybody. Um, we're going through a bit of a, a relapse, I suppose, of the coronavirus. Um, we've had an outbreak of 30 or 40 cases in the last sort of three or four days. So they've tightened restrictions a little bit. Uh, masks are very much the norm when you go out over here, but life has gone on the jockey club has taken any measure possible to ensure that racing does continue, which it has done and hopefully will continue to do. Righto, Marcus. Tell us how long you've been there. And it's obviously a huge difference from New Zealand racing, where you spent 10 years and then spent some time back in the studio in Sky and Sydney. Um, this must be a complete contrast to what you used to. It's just an amazing part of the world, Greg. Never been to Hong Kong. Arrived a month ago today. Um, done so much in that time. Uh, the racing has been behind closed doors the entire time. So we're talking crowds of about three, four hundred metres, three hundred metres, three hundred people. Uh, um, basically, Rickerton on a Thursday, I guess you could call it, um, with the, the owners only being allowed in. Unless you're an official or an owner of a horse, it's all about the horse and the punting over here. They are the only people allowed on course. So it's a small crowd as opposed to the 90,000 they would normally get to the Derby last Sunday. Uh, there are a few people around, but the racetracks are enormous. There's eight levels at both tracks uh, in the grandstand. There's restaurants, there's bars. Happy Valley even has a McDonald's on course. Unfortunately, it's closed at the moment, which from a fat gut's probably a good thing. But to go to the races and see McDonald's is rather exciting. Mark, tell me about your first few calls. And I know you broke into it by perhaps calling three or four races in a night. Um, how challenging it, at this stage of your career? Um, it's controlling the nerves still. I was pretty nervous before the derby because even though 10 years in New Zealand, you'd called the Group 1s and the 1,000 and the 2,000 guineas and the trotting cups and the dominions, this was a $20 million Hong Kong derby going to a completely different uh, audience than what, you'd called in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, I know those races, the, the guineas at Rickon would go out worldwide and, and the trots would also have an audience. This was going to about nine different countries and it was important to try and get that derby right. You've got one chance to nail your first um, big feature race. That was the derby and thanks to Blake Shin, it became the most remarkable, wonderful, entertaining derby that they've had in a long time here in Hong Kong. Yeah, well, you must have been delighted because you, you did nail it. It was right up there with your best calls of the Group 1s. Golden 60, who had gone through unbeaten through the, uh, the the crown there, only the second horse to do that. He is. Uh, Rapid Dragon was the first one. They've got the, the lead-up races, so it's the triple crown of four-year-old racing. The derby is for the four-year-olds in Hong Kong, and Golden 60 had been beaten once since he arrived in Hong Kong. That was last season. Uh, he's unbeaten as a four-year-old. He was shuffled back to near enough to last at the 900 metres. And on pace had been not a bad place to be at uh, Sha Tin on Sunday. We saw on the race prior to the Derby a horse called Wellington, who's now won three in a row, let down and let down with an almighty burst. He looks like a very, very good horse in the making, Wellington. Pretty sure he's off for a break now. Golden 60 had to come from eight or nine lengths off the back of Playa del Puente. The ride by Blake Sheen, if you haven't seen it, is the best ride in defeat you'll probably ever see. Uh, he took the race to it, coming to the 600 metre mark. He went from last to first and he put up four lengths and Golden 60 still had five lengths to make up at the 200. I think I said he was a length off the leader, Golden 60. It was more like three at the time. Um, and he was running out of time. It didn't look like he was going to get there. His champion qualities came through. He proved why he is the best horse in Hong Kong when it comes to the derby sector of the four-year-olds, but he had to show all his championship qualities to win that race on Sunday. Mark, Australasian link came through the Magic Million sales, about 120000 back in 2017, and, of course, winning jockey Vincent Ho. Vincent Ho and Graham Richardson had quite a bit to do with the horse before he arrived in Hong Kong. So um everyone was happy for vincent because he is a homegrown jockey despite spending time overseas where you've got your joe mariras and your zach who are just dominating the premiership over here so for hong kong racing to have a homegrown jockey win the derby was a pretty big thing for them 
Mark, how different doing the form? I mean, it's a long, long way from the green pastures of the uh, the triangle, as we called it, the mot. So um, how different? It's it's quite different. Fortunately, there's only about 1,200 horses over here. So um, they're very compact, the, the numbers, which will become easier to get to know them. And the videos, you can watch just about every replay angle uh, imaginable on the website. Everything's there, the vet records, the track work. So that comes in very handy. Um, luckily enough, I've been calling the trials since I've been here, which has also been a massive plus to get to know uh, the local horses as they come through. A Thero trialled last week, Beauty Generation trialled last week, Furore trialled yesterday. So you get to see the big guns coming through. And the other thing is they've all got individual saddle costs. So you can drive out to the trials and catch the end of track work and look up online, who's that? And that's Beauty Generation, that's Happy Winner. Uh, some of the names over here are rippers. And the other thing, Gregory, there's one mare here. So horses like Foodie Princess and Monica are actually geldings. Right. <laughs> that's something I didn't know and, and something you've had to get to know. Yeah, that's pretty incredible stuff, isn't it? Um, what are the government saying over there, Mark, getting back to the coronavirus situation? What, what are the vibes you're getting uh, around uh, the streets, if you like? Has it... Has it lifted a little bit? Are there less people walking around? Are there more now? What, what are you feeling? What's your sense of uh, Life has gone on. Everyone has told us that it's quieter than what it is. I know there's been some reports down in that part of the world that the shopping malls are empty, there's no one around, and it's all quiet, which is just rubbish. There's still plenty of people out and about. Um, two weeks ago, there was a slight lowering of people wearing masks. You'd go walking down Happy Valley and you'd see less and less masks. There was that outbreak which they think came in from um, tourists coming in or people which had come back from abroad, which has, again, brought the number of cases up by 30 or 40. So they're looking at tightening. I think it starts tonight that uh, alcohol can't be served in restaurants. Um, so that's what they're going to do to tighten up that at this stage. And there's not a whole lot more measurements in place other than that at the moment. Hong Kong went through SARS back in the early 2000s, so they, they were hit pretty hard by SARS. So the locals are very um, to the forefront when it comes to taking measures of any possible pandemics. And that's why you see so many masks. And if you don't wear one, you do certainly get looked at like, why aren't you wearing a mask if you end up on public transport, which is the way of getting around over here. People have cars, but the taxis, the trams and the railway are just are so populated with people. So if you go out not wearing a mask on one, you're certainly got looked at, but it, it's life goes on for the locals, but just on a quieter scale than what everyone tells you. And you were talking to me earlier about how you go into the office and uh, your temperature gets taken pretty much on every level. Yeah, pretty much. Um, temperature checks are a regular thing, not only at work, some supermarkets you'll go in there, they'll take your temperature at the gate. Ah, uh, yeah, work's a funny one. You walk into the office at Shard 10 and the ground floor, they take your temperature. You go up the escalator to level one, they take your temperature again. So uh, if you run a temperature between the ground floor and the first floor, yeah, you've got yourself an issue. But they're, they're very keen to make sure it doesn't go any wider than what it does. The jockey club, they just want to keep racing. Uh, racing is the thing in Hong Kong. Pretty much everything else is off. And even when everything is on, Racing is the be all and end all when it comes to, to Hong Kong. It is the sporting town. Yep, and you're loving the opportunity, no doubt. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's just, it still didn't seem real after the derby on Sunday. Um, the race itself was great, but you still, I guess maybe not so much in the last week, but the first three the weeks, you're thinking, I'm still a tourist, this is going to come to an end, and you go to work and you go and see your Pertons and your Mariras and they're walking past and they, the jockeys actually live on course at Sha Tin, that the international jockeys live in a unit block on course. So they walk down um, to the jockey's room, which is a couple of hundred metres, the other couple of hundred metres away is the stables. And yeah, it, it's, it's a different world just seeing how big racing and, and they've got the advantage that it's only two tracks. It's very centralised. Another horses are based at Sha Tin. They truck them down to Happy Valley this afternoon, they run, they truck them home and the jockey club, they run the trucking company. So poor old Majestic, they wouldn't be getting a foot in the door over here, Gregory. <laughs> no go for them. Well, Gay Waterhouse has just walked in, Marcus, so it uh, might be time to go out and, and feed the horses and 
I'm picking we might have an opportunity to do this again pretty soon. So uh, go well tonight. Congratulations again on the Derby call. And um, you're looking well. And, and, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, things will only go up from here for you. Thanks, Grego, and g'day back to everyone in New Zealand. Uh, we're thinking of you, hopefully this lock lamp down, down there doesn't last any longer than it has to.